Hi, everybody. Good evening. Uh, my name is Alan, and on behalf of the crew of the show, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, just so often in our lives, we think there's, there's division, we think there's separation, we think there's an opposition to us, but there really is an experience of, of oneness, of togetherness, that we can transcend whatever we think the divisions are, the barriers are, between us experiencing the love and the connectedness of all living things and, and the earth and the trees and the dolphins and, and each, of our, each of the peoples of this earth, no matter what color or religion or experience we think they have or we have that creates a separation or a difference. And really, I can really feel that the time is now to bring that experience into truth, into reality. And tonight we have people with us to share with you their love and their gift of that experience of, of oneness. They travel the world to bring that to people, to bring their love and their understanding to people in different ways, but it's ultimately the same way because it's a vibration of love. It's a bright vibration of inspiration. Uh, we have back with us again, we got tremendous numbers of calls about both the people tonight, about Lama Oli Nidal and Sarah West. And Lama Oli is a Buddhist teacher. He's an author of uh, this extraordinary new book, The Way Things Are. He's traveled the world. Uh, he's uh, founded probably more than 150, 180, 200 Diamond Way Buddhist teaching centers all over the world. And that the intention of these centers, the intention of his life and his work is to bring an experience to people where we can know truth, where we can know love, where we can know the real brotherhood and sisterhood of the human of the human species and all the other life forms on this extraordinary planet. And we have with us again also uh, Sarah West who again travels the world and goes to all the sacred sites and does workshops and teachings and tonings and uh, just brings her love and her way vibrationally through her voice, this extraordinary instrument she's been given to once again allow people to for that period of time at least to experience that love and then hopefully bring it back into their lives, bring it back into a reality for them on a consistent basis. So we're just tremendously honored again to have these people only flew in, I think from overseas and flew to, to San Francisco and drove his motorcycle down to Santa Barbara where we shoot. Uh, Sarah came up, she used to live in Santa Barbara, as some of you know, and she f came up from San Diego. And we're just so honored to have them with us in the studio tonight to do a live show. And it's just really an extraordinary experience for, for us all, and we hope you have it too. So as we normally do at this time, to set a tone for the show, to set a, a vibration, to just quiet whatever we've done all day, whatever insanity or craziness or drama we, we think we have in our lives, to just settle in and for the next 58 minutes to just allow that vibration of love, of oneness, of connectedness to, to overcome us all and maybe bring us all one step closer into that experience. So please join me in a short meditation. Thank you. So we're going to start tonight's show with uh, Sarah doing The Sound of Peace, Part 1. She's written and uh, is going to be performing it. And just relax into the magnificence of her vocal instrument. It's, it's really an unbelievable experience. So whenever Sarah's ready...
Wow, thank you, Sarah. That was magnificent. So we're on the set with uh, Lama Oli. Well, it's good to have you back, Oli. Yes, Wonderful. you also. You're yes. in good shape. Yeah. Fine man. Yeah. <laughs> so for, for some of the... Uh, we've added a lot more cities since you've been here the last time. So for some of the six million people who haven't seen the last show, why don't you just describe a little bit about how, how you would define Buddhism and how you would see its practice manifesting now? Well, what's special about Buddhism today is that it's not a religion of faith or belief, it's a religion of experience. It's, the goal is not to please a god, the goal is to fully develop our human potential. And the goal is also not to follow some kind of dogmas, but to, well, bring forth all the power and qualities we have inherently. So, Buddha taught three kinds of people. Some people wanted to get rid of their own problems. He taught them about cause and effect, about finding a distance to what was going on. And very often these people became monks and nuns, because you are protected like that. Then he taught for the lay people how to keep compassion and wisdom in a healthy balance, so one doesn't go overboard in compassion and become sentimental. And one doesn't go overboard in wisdom and become bureaucratic, right? Mm -hmm. But one has a round inner life. But the most important teaching he gave was that everybody's mind is clear light. That that which is aware right now, looking through our eyes and listening through our ears, is like space. That this space is radiantly clear and conscious and that it has no ending or stop. And this realization makes people fearless, joyful and actively compassionate. And it's also this teaching that's most interesting today. It's the Diamond Way teaching that is rolling the West today, rocking the West, shaking the West, bringing lots of centers and lots of developments. And why do you think, do you think that the Western mind, which has been materialistic and involved with things like that, is more ready for it? It has the short <laughs> the spiritual leg for so long and the log. <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing. We are the idealists. The Easterners are the materialists. The people in the East know the price of everything. We know the value of a few things. I mean, it's, we are babies in the wood, you know, we Westerners. We are dreamers, we have our hearts in front of our shirts, you know, we are vulnerable, you know, we are, we are, the, we are the highly intelligent but soft babies to be protected. And in the East, one knows exactly how things happen. We just made a book here, a friend of mine, or my student, travels with me actually, Tomic Lehnert. He's just made this book here called Rogues in Robes, which is about the Chinese attempts, communist Chinese attempts to control the, the freedom of the, of the Tibetan Buddhists. It's in Joy, or what is it now? This is in Blue, Blue Dolphin mm -hmm. uh, Publishing, and this is sort of a real, you know, a real story of what has been happening the so last this starts, five years. The last five years, this does it go back to years. when they took over, when the Dalai Lama yes, left? Yes, yes, yes. It goes back to before that, but mm -hmm. this was even back to the tricks the Tibetans played with each other, right? I mean, mm -hmm. they're also human. A Buddhist doesn't mean a Buddha, right? Right. So one still makes a few mistakes <laughs> right. and so on. So this is, you know, this is one of the things we have. And, well... Just, it's just a time where the West, which is very idealistic, is also insisting that what we get is completely clear and pure and useful and without old politics and vested interests and so on. And this is happening now, and that's a very interesting development. How do you feel about the, the, the recent allegations, at least, that the Dalai Lama is trying to you know, make some sort of compromise or do something with the Chinese people? Well, it's... And go back to Tibet yeah, at some point? Communist Chinese, well, it's probably a survival thing. They have put uh, 7.5 million uh, Chinese into Tibet, which has less than 6 million people. So they are a minority in their own country, and it may be a survival thing. On the other hand, you know, Dalai Lama is not in a very lucky situation. You know, he has his Kashak, his own government that always doesn't always do what he says, you know, and he's under pressure from all sides and so on. But the, the recent attacks from the Red Chinese could actually be a sign that they are trying to get into a comfortable position for doing some kind of deal with him later, and I would like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are so many Tibetans who really like His Holiness, who are really impressed by him, and 
and you know touched by him and they should have a chance to see him i think so it would be really a beautiful thing for him to be able to go back there It'd be and good if we could go because back people really are feeling that yes if we could go back without being controlled with enough uh, uh, scrutiny from the west enough check that he doesn't eat something that he suddenly dies or something like comes that comes down with a plate yeah, yeah, something <laughs> like that like something like that it would be good i would it would actually gladden me because so many people wish that on the other hand, I mean, we have seen uh, uh, incarnate being, several incarnates being manipulated by the Chinese these days. And it is quite probable that the Dalai Lama, who is a very kind person, and I know him personally. Right, I mean, yeah. I remember he calls me his old friend. We were together three weeks ago in, in Graz in southern Austria. And, you know, I mean, that they would just wear him down. His kind, you know, and if they just come in with their whole politburo and put, start grinding him down, you know, right. it probably would not be very nice for him. So let's see what happens, you know, but it's a hard situation. Yeah, it's a hard situation. It's a yeah. very hard situation. Right. Yeah. So, but you find that, that as you travel the world, that there's just a tremendous growth in the numbers of people who, are, who want to, in one way or another, experience that clarity of mind, that experience yeah. of love. That yes. yes, yes, and it's moving also here. I mean, America is an incredibly Christian country. It's much more Christian than anything we have in, in Europe. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, and Purit completely the whole different. thing yeah, with yes. the president, the puritanical yes, it, oh. back. Yeah, it's, it's pathetic. <laughs> isn't it? was, Christ. It's, I mean, I would say to somebody, hey, how much it, money and how much time are we going to spend on this stupidity? I mean, for what they spend in one day on one of those idiotic hearings, we could put the show on in every country and every, yeah, you know, 24 hours a day, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's, 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 and that's just the it's whole funny, puritanical yeah. route. And I know. No, it's just, it is very Christian here, but people are beginning, to, there are quite a few people who want answers they can experience and don't have to believe, right? right? And that is very good. But over in Europe, you know, I mean, we're big. I don't think I have any evening that I teach with less than 500 people. Really? Now. And wow. we are way over. And Russia is ahead with 73 centers at present, I think. There are 73 German, centers in all Russia? All the way across. I spent two wow. months there every I said year. 180. I mean, so if you have 73 in Russia, no, we Russia have about, are like loaded in about Russia. About 215 around wow. the world. Wow, this fantastic. Tomic here who wrote this book, he also keeps check of our centers and so right. on. And, that's and your life count. is basically just to go from one center to another center to another center, yeah, and, and then ride your, bi your motorcycle yeah. every now and then. You got it. Whenever I can. Right, yeah. right. Uh, yes, I mean we had. Uh, yes, I'm Danish, right? And but I'm two weeks in Denmark every year, not more than that. Mm -hmm. And I like Denmark, but I don't have time to be there more. Right. So it's like it's a busy thing. Most of it, you know, Central Europe is very powerful. So what, what would you say? This, I mean, you described the three central like teachings, but how yeah. would you say that, you know, if somebody came to you and said, how would one approach trying to learn to be a Buddhist or Buddhism? Or I would try to actually uh, advise them to think of their mind as a, ho as a house. I would say, well, you need a foundation. Right? Otherwise, you know, the house falls down. You need walls, otherwise it doesn't contain anything. And you need a roof, otherwise everything is unprotected, right? So think of your mind like that. On the level of, of the foundation, watch out about cause and effect. Do think and say things that are useful and avoid things that are harmful, right? And just generally. And about the walls, I'd say think of all beings because no matter how smart the things you do are, if you just do them for yourself, you know, they stay small. And try to understand that the world is a bit like a dream, right? Like a big collective dream with a lot of individual dreams inside it. Mm -hmm. That sort of balances compassion and wisdom. But the really important thing in Buddhism is actually that we don't need to die to go to what's called a pure land and we don't need to... Uh, go somewhere else to meet Buddhas. We just need to polish our eyes, and there sits Alan, a perfect Buddha, right? Yeah. With all the I've qualities. Said that. I've yes, said that yes, quite often. Heard that myself, before. Yeah. Yes, yes. 
and around, you know, is that everything, every atom vibrates with joy, is kept together by love, and every thought is fantastic just because it can happen and so on. This is sort of the essential and, thing. But that has to be an experience or a knowing. Well, you start with what you have, you start and with then the, you, you try to get more. And right? so, in okay, say you have the thought, like, okay, yeah. I, I, I can relate to that, I can believe in that. Yeah. What would be the next step? How would you well, walk somebody to well, the next if step? If you start with the thought, I would, I would uh, well, make a foundation for the thought with different kinds of philosophical statements and examinations, and then I'd get into meditation. And then I would try to act into the world what I had understood through my meditation. And if you start like our generation, right, with the experience, whether through chemicals or whatever, right? My parents watch this show, so I'm not going to admit <laughs> no, it. No, so. no, no, no. <laughs> no way. No, not me. Also. <laughs> right. I don't know what. No, I don't know what he's talking about. about but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, like some from our generation, some my people we just know. had an operation, right? so if he hears this, it's not going to be good. Okay, okay. But I hear tell people. Have yeah, done yeah. That. I also heard about this. Right. Yes. yes. So anyway, you know, if that's the basis, well, then you have to get clarity into the experience. You have to make it beyond personal. You have to stop being attached to the experience, but to go for the, for, for, for the larger picture that for 2,500 years, people have had similar experiences and gradually grown. And again, you're in the middle. You have a total thing. Mm -hmm. So you need a view, you need a meditation, and you need an action. And, med and meditation is just a tool to quiet the mind, and if the mind is quiet in a sense, or the yeah. what exists behind yeah. the quiet mind is yes. the clarity. You, you can say a meditation, the first goal of meditation is to create distance. So you can see if a comedy or a tragedy is on its way, and if it's a tragedy, stay out, and if it's a comedy, take all the roles, mm -hmm. right? right? Then on the second level, it's a question but of motivation. But if you go to one or the other, I mean, can you choose one side of the coin or another? Oh yes, you, yeah. you, oh yes, on that point you can. You see two people are coming together to right. do something intelligent and two people are coming together to do something useless. Stay away from the useless people, join the intelligent ones. We, just might, basically. Have to, we might have to leave the set. No, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yes, you said. But anyway, so that is that would be this. Second level of motivation or meditation is actually motivating the mind starting with the wish to become enlightened for the good of all beings and finish by sharing the good feelings. And the last thing is behave like Buddha until you become Buddha. And that's the most important one. It's really central one, behave like Buddha until you become him. And, and how would one know how to behave like Buddha if one has an experience with Buddha experience? Well, be as spontaneous and effortless as you can, have as much compassion as you can, and try to avoid harming others. That's a good start. But, but wouldn't you have to know the experience of not harming and not injuring before that would be a reality? You, you know, rather it would be a concept. You know, and, mm -hmm. and you'd be walking around with concepts of what injuring someone would be instead of having the experience of love and manifesting that. Yes. But you're, you're working them all together, and that's what yeah. meditation is like, to rub you up the, against the experience of, yes. of that. Yes, that's what it is. And also, you know, I mean, we all have so much background. You know, we have a whole life. There's so many things many. we've done and been right. done to us, and lots right. of wisdom, former lives also. I think if you tell people to behave, treat others like they want to be treated themselves, they probably have a good idea of what they would like to More happen to themselves. people would like to, yeah. to be treated nicely. Yeah, sure they would. Right. Sure they would. So in, in essence, I mean, all the different, I mean, we've, you know, this is actually the 70th, 70th show, and we've had a lot of people come on with a lot of different ways mm. of looking at it. But ultimately, it's a very simple thing. Yes, The experience of love is very yeah, simple, because sure, that's sure. what everything is in a way. Subject, object, and action, not separate, right? right? Yeah. Then you have it. And, and so you're finding that people are just really opening, open, up to, opening that. to that. They and are want it up. and hungry. And yes, massively, massively. I mean, the only places I, I would not teach, for instance, is in Muslim states, right? Because there I would not be able to protect my students. Mm -hmm. But everywhere else, you know, where no mullahs would come and kill them and where there is a basis, you know, I actually see that people can learn and understand. Muslim states, I wouldn't do that.
We have a little group in Ankara and Turkey. I tell them to keep secret, not say a word to anybody. Because in those countries, the they can the be killed. I mean, people are being killed for being Christian. Opposition is not being dealt with in a very kind and compassionate no, no, no. I mean, way. If you're not Muslim, you you get killed. It's a very open way to look at. Very beautiful. Very practical. Very yes. practical. It keeps the. <laughs> Keeps the, the core thing going. well ordered. Right, right. Yeah. All right, so I guess maybe we'll just take a little time out now and do the second set uh, with Sarah. Sarah West is going to do uh, The Sound of Peace Part 2, uh, which is probably going to be similar to The Sound of Peace Part 1. And she's also going to do uh, The Spoken Prayer. That's going to be her second number in this set. And both uh, The uh, Sound of Peace and The Spoken Prayer were written and are going to be performed by Sarah West. So whenever you're ready, Sarah. Resurrection through the body, through the mind, through the heart, from the soul. Purity, innocence, power, truth. Holding tree, letting go of fear, coming together with you, O oh, Holy One, be one. Are we? Forever. 
glory be. I surrender. Life lives through me, through you, through we. Well, thank you, sir. That was fun. Nice. That was a, thank you. Amazing. So here we are. We're back with Oli. So when you travel the world, I mean, what do you find that uh, is the difficulty that people have, or that you know that you have had in the past? Or the, you know, what what prevents us from having that experience? I think the misunderstood un, uh, f misunderstanding of the functioning of the brain is the worst thing. I mean, people think that the brain produces the mind. And we Buddhists say that it transforms the mind. They think that brain is like a radio station. We think it's a radio. We think that mind is like a timeless movement in space, which has never started and which moves from one body to the next until it becomes aware of its own timeless nature, its space, clarity, and unlimited nature. So this one thing actually takes a lot 
takes uh, the, the joy of thinking of many lives and timelessness and so on away from a lot of people. Actually, it's often the finest and the bravest people who have thought, who think that I must stand up to this and face that I am impermanent and that my essence will disappear and so on. And when we come and tell them, listen, it's not like that, you know, what is really you, the thoughts and feelings will go, you know, the pictures in the mirror will go and the waves in the ocean will go, but the experiencer, the mirror and the ocean will stay. Then, you know, this can be a big jump for them because they think it was what they wanted to think themselves and hope to think, you know, but if you bring it like that, they may say, hey, he's making it too easy for me or something like that. Until That's they have the, the experience. Obstacle. Until they then have the yeah. experience right. that they are not the thoughts and feelings, they are that which is behind the thoughts, which knows the thoughts, you know. When they recognize that they are that. When the they separation begin, takes yes, place, yeah. Then they begin to understand really that actually, you know, that, that awareness, that which is looking through my eyes right now, it's, it, it hasn't been born and it cannot die, it's timeless. And when they begin to experience that, that's great. I give these conscious dying courses. I've just passed 30,000 people I've given it to this year. This year was the 13,000 in over 11 years. And people learn, it's called POA. You learn to send your consciousness projected from the top of your head into a pure realm. And after that, over in Germany, I usually go parachuting or bungee jumping or something like that with my students also. And many hundred have been jumping with me and so on. It's more expensive than here. America is the best country for parachuting. It's so cheap here. Mm -hmm. We pay $200 over Yeah, our over parachutes there. don't work as well. That's one of the reasons. <laughs> I don't know about that. Anyway, as far as I know, it's, it's very cheap. No, I look forward I to trying here I think it's very safe here. here. Yeah, <laughs> it is. I look forward to trying here also. But anyway, you know, uh, you know we, and people, they... You know, they've never done anything like that before. It's the first jump. So it's, yeah. just, it's a way of overcoming the fear yeah, of yeah, anything yeah, in a yes, way. Yes, right, I because mean, what are you losing? Yeah. What, what's, what are yeah. you afraid of? They Exactly, they come down, you know, and they say, hey, I never felt better. You know, I never felt better than the free fall. And when they opened the chute, it was actually got, got, got boring, right? Mm -hmm. and that but is they're not going to try it the next time oh, without yes, opening yes. it. No, no, not no, without. No, no, no. Okay. But you, you. That would be a short, joy, joyful yeah, trip. Yeah, that would be very short. And you would right. end up as a mole, right? right. <laughs> now, listen, you know, you begin to experience that there is something between it. That's the thing right. about extreme sports. That's why I love my motorcycle in mm -hmm. the curves, right? Mm -hmm. Quick with no police around and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, there you go beyond, you become that which experiences. You can't stay with the experiences. You have to be right? there. You have, you to, have be to be there, there right? now, right? Because otherwise you yeah, made right. a mistake, right? right? And you only There's make only one, one mistake. mistake. Only right. one mistake. Right. I feel like that on my moped, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I don't like to push it, no. no, no. Uh, so, so in, in other words, it's like creating the gap or experiencing the gap between what we think we are and what we really yes, are. Yes, yes. The between understanding that which is behind and between the thoughts and experiences and knowing that to be timeless. Be the mirror, not the pictures, or also the pictures, but be in essence the mirror. Be the ocean, not just the waves, right? Be that which is aware, which is looking through our eyes, listening through our ears, not just all the objects and things which come and go. That's what it's all about. And, and that process at some point has to experience a quiet, a, yes. a meditation or, or whatever, you know, form or tool you would use to yes. have, like, to stop the world, to, to, to separate. Yes, yes there, yes, there has to be a moment of focusing inside and so on. It's just uh, the times are different now. In Tibet, they used to send people in yeah, for many years, years of meditation yeah. <laughs> right. and so on. They sat around. And uh, probably a lot of the things they learned when they were sitting there, we learn in school already, mm -hmm. right? Crim uh, discriminating thinking and stuff like that. All this they learned in their retreats, we learn it in school. So for a modern person, it's short retreats or a few short meditations during the day which really hones the mind, which really mm -hmm. sharpens. And, and people who sit for too long, they are useless when they come out often. They're too soft, you know, they're too spiritual, too holy, too something, right? They can't really get to it, what happens. So in other words, it has to be some balance there between the physical, oh, yes, you know, yes, yes, yes. whatever words we're using, but we're spirit in a yeah. body. So I mean, You must not lose your sharpness. 
Right. You must not become wishy-washy and airy-fairy and, and space out, you know. You must go. The, the important thing in the meditation is actually, you know, you stay in a state where you experience space as being awareness, you know, awareness which can rest in itself, which needs no object. Just aware without having to be aware of anything. But then you come out of that, you know, you let a pure world appear. And the feeling from this meditation into the between or after meditation, the change there is as little as possible. The feeling is kept as much as in any way possible. That's what it's about. Mm -hmm. You're becoming that experience. Yes, yeah, you become and you right. carry it with, with you all you. the time. Right. Yes, and, and you see that happening. See, what I see you know, from just doing the show yeah. and just being around is that it's just accelerating now for whatever mm -hmm. reason, mm -hmm. millennium, the year 2000, yeah. or, but that, that experience is becoming more available sure. to people and, and they're p coming into it faster. Sure, more and more things happen while the poor, the black brown belt around the equator overpopulates and hungers and kill themselves. We in the temperate zones, you know, we, we live quite nicely, you know, and develop mm -hmm. spiritual things and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Sure, sure, sure. I There's remember more of everything. the last time you were on the show, you said you had a real concern about Overpopulation. Overpopulation. Oh, it hurts me. You know, every really? time you look, it, of course, I, I travel around the world twice a year. You know, I see so many things. People who will never have a chance to live properly, who will never have a chance to have an education, who will never even get enough proteins to fully develop their brains, right? In so many countries around the world. The only thing I can see, whether the Pope likes it or not, whether the Mullahs like it or not, it doesn't interest me. The only thing I can think of is that if we want to stop massive suffering on a scale we can't even, even think of today, you know, then we have to help or force the people in the poor countries and the ghettos to have less children. There is no other way. If we want, we have the choice quantity or quality, we are not going to have both. Would you say that there's not enough food or not enough? No, there's not enough life, there's not enough life quality. I mean, mm -hmm. even if you can produce the food, you can make a photosynthesis and many things. A person sometimes needs a chance to look over a landscape which isn't full of other people, right? Mm -hmm. and, and go and have a proper education and have some peace and not always be disturbed be disturbed by noises and stuff like that. For a full human development, there needs to be a certain amount of space for every person. And they don't have that in Africa. They don't have that in the metropolises of South America, you know, in Central America. They don't have that in Asia. They really don't have it. And, and I would like them to have that. You know, a, a hundred years ago, there was one billion people in the world. We are now nearly six. Before 2050, we will be 11. And they will not live in England or they will not live in America, they will not live in Denmark. They will live in that black and brown belt around the equator, you know, which is already overpopulated. They will suffer massively if we don't help them now. And, and what way would you say would be the best way I to would help? Give them, I'd pay them, I'd simply make a, a, a pension. Families that promised to just have one child would have their old age secured by the United Nations or whatever. It's better, you just know. Just some kind yeah. of inducement. To, yeah, so to they get money. You know, they get money for just having one kid. Every family that will just promise to just have one kid, you know, will be nourished when they get old. I mean, the reason, for instance, Indians have so many kids is not that they want to destroy their women. It's simply because, you know, it's simply because, you know, if they have ten kids, maybe one of them will earn some money and give them food when they get old. That's the, that's what's behind it. So if we can guarantee them food like that when they get old, they don't need, they need maybe one child and send him to university and do something for him, right? Instead of having them all begging around and doing jobs that machines should be doing. I, well, one of the other reasons that that there seems to be an overpopulation problem is that people, you know, the whole birth control issue and things like that, that, you know, religion says you can't do that. So. You know, you're locked into that side of it too. Yeah, so you should be smarter than your gods. If your gods are not smart enough, you should be smarter, right? If your gods can't count, you help them, right? That's what I think. Well, if the Catholic God cannot count, you know, and he cannot see what is there. We should help him. Sure, he needs. But that. but would you say that the the strength of those religious beliefs, rightly or wrongly, are the things that prevent? 
Yes, this is rational thought sure, from coming yeah. into oh, sure, this area. Sure, sure. And suffering almost isn't an issue. The oh, issue is that religions you are oppressive. You know, look at Islam. Every time you look in the newspaper, two thirds of all the suffering comes from them. It does. Suppression, pain, women in the never name of, have in a the name of God, in the name of love, Allah, in the name of their Allah, right? And so everybody who tries to control others and tell them what to think and get into their lives, they deserve a kick in the butt, mm -hmm. I think. Good so, kick. Yes, uh, so why do you think that, I mean, it, it seems to me that religions basically, I, I would almost go as far as to say almost all religions, when they get away from the, the master who had the experience, it just gets watered down and people mm -hmm. are not having that experience of the way I would describe it, love or oneness. Or, yeah, sure, sure, sure. And then it just starts to be bureaucratic, and it just starts yeah. to be money, and it just starts to be other things, and ideas, pressure. and yeah, pressure, yeah. and I'm higher, and you know, yeah, just yeah. all so the hierarchies, hierarchies and, and stuff like yeah, that. Sure, sure, sure. So, the the key would be that that is more people who have that experience. Then they, how can you believe that after a time? It mm -hmm. won't be real to you if no. you have the experience of truth. No then all the illusion is just yeah. going to fall away. Completely right, but for every one of us who has that experience in the West, because we are educated, because we are free, because we learn how to think critically, because our societies are transparent, because we have democracy, there are probably 10 people who are born into a situation where they'll never have a chance to do that. That's what I was talking about. They're the ones who and, have And to. some people would say that there's certain karmic that they've choo chosen to come in that way. Yeah. I mean, how do you relate to that? I think that if we just let people be born here that can have an education and be supplied and fed, another universe will appear for the ones who would otherwise be coming here. I think so. Another universe, this whole world is just a collective dream we have anyway. Mm -hmm. So another world would condense somewhere in space and they would live there. I'm sure about that. But I think we have our responsibility here. This is what we know, mm -hmm. right? So people, the, should be, people should live well. People are so wonderful. If they're educated, if they're free, they're so wonderful. And if they're suppressed and brainwashed and unfed, you know, it's so painful. So, I mean, that, that's really, in a way, what, what drives you, what moves yes, you around yes, the world. Sure to, it is, sure to it is. I want grown-up people, you know. I want people who are independent, who are grown-up, who have real power, you know, who can do something for others and for themselves. This is what I want to see. That's, that's my real thing. And the reason I'm with Buddha is because he produces that. That's the reason, really, honestly. Mm -hmm. It's not because I'm looking for own salvation and stuff like that. It's not like that, but I really have the confidence that the Diamond Way methods makes people grow up if the right people get them in the right way. But you wouldn't say that's the only way people could have that experience? No, I think many, you know, whichever religion points to the experience or behind the experiences, whichever religion goes beyond uh, good and bad, gods and devils, and points to that open, clear, limitless space where they appear, play around, are known and disappear again. Whichever religion does that is perfect. I know Buddhism and Advaita Vedanta Hinduism, they do that. But mystics in all religion have that experience. And, and the important thing, as we've said the whole show, is to have the experience. Once you have the yeah, experience, so, all the rest falls aside, yeah, sure, all the sure, theories, sure. and it doesn't sure. matter what you call yourself. No, no. Because there's, you've become sure, one. Sure. sure, it's like so, a boat you take. Right. The methods are like a boat you take from the coast of ignorance to the coast of liberation and enlightenment, and then you send it back. You don't carry you it don't on. You don't need the right? boat. Don't what do you need it for? Right. Because yeah. that's just heavy. It's extra yeah, yeah, weight. Sure, 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 sure. And then you, f why then do you I are feel? spontaneous and right. effortless, right? Then you are beyond method. Then you're just here now. Right. That's true. They compared to a picture in water, painted in water. What was before is gone. What comes doesn't happen. It didn't happen yet, and the moment is always right. You know, yeah, we've one. talked about that a lot, is, is yeah. that everything, all the spirits, I was saying that just to somebody yesterday, is to bring you into the moment. Yeah, yeah, sure. how, where else can you live? Where else yeah. can life yeah, be yeah, except yeah. in the moment? The rest is all yeah, and no know, thought form, yeah. it's just and it doesn't exist. Yeah. Nobody got enlightened yesterday, nobody got enlightened tomorrow, right. everybody always gets enlightened now. Right? Well, everybody has fun now, everybody yeah. has joy now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's yeah, where sure. we live. That's you know? sure. 
So, I mean, it's really an extraordinary thing for me because I don't, you know, I, I do it here and it go, this show goes out all over yeah, the yeah. world. Yeah. So I don't see it like one-to-one. -one. I get calls and emails. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. But you go out and you actually see like the I explosion the oh, yeah, of... Sure, sure, sure. I see that and more than that, you know, I mean, I see 500 faces every evening somewhere in the world, mm -hmm. you know, listening to a lecture, right? And, and, and do I you look see this them, happening in the, the, you know, the black-brown belt? Are they, is there... No, Enough they have to get fed they first. They have to eat. We can right. only get the upper classes. We only get the upper classes. Like South America, Mexico, and so on, we only get the upper classes. I would love to go out and shake up a few others, you know, but you only get the upper classes because only they have the education and the leisure. In Africa, we don't get anybody. We can't do anything there. Well, it's one I mean, you hold the program from there the top and, you know, the like... They will not understand the I abstract do, part. Right. They will love it, you know, they will love right. the good feeling, but they will not understand the abstract. And it would be hard for them to follow through because yes, their sure. lives they aren't set up it. to do no, that. No, 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 it just not. would be a waste of yeah. everyone's time yeah. at, at that point. So one of your goals would be to bring them to the point bring where the they're level. eating yeah. and educated. Yes, yeah, sure, sure, sure. And then then starts the, next the higher is. arts. Yes, yes. So, I form. mean, you, you feel like you have to really take people where they are. I mean, to think that somebody can understand something when they basically can. It's ludicrous. Yeah, no, no, you have to be practical. Life is short, and you know, you right. do all kinds, you climb up trees with no fruit in them, you know, you right. waste your time. <laughs> right, what's the point? You yeah, want to yeah, eat. Sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's sure, like sure. writing down an apple yeah. on a piece of paper and yeah, start eating are. it, you know, right. No, it's true, that's completely true. So, do you find, I mean, like, when you watch it from that place of, do you get sad when you see this? I mean, no, because I always see the Buddha nature. Even if I see people starving in Calcutta, you know, or full of leprosy somewhere, whatever else you may see and so on, there's always that Buddha nature, you know, that that which is looking through their eyes, right, that cannot die. And other lives, it will appear in other forms, in other situations. and. Someday, you know, it may be possible to hold up a mirror and say, hey, you know, look, 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 don't just look at things, look at yourself. Recognize your mind to be space, then you'll become so fearless. You could, so in other words, you could recognize it being like a... A, a magic a bad, show. Yeah, but a, but a, bad a, a, but a bad situation yeah. in a sense and still perfect in another sense. Yes, yes, sure, sure, sure. I mean, if somebody came in here and threw a few hand grenades, I mean, we wouldn't like it, but I don't think all I don't the think. pieces of us I was would hoping fly to get to by 75 the... 75 at least. No, no, all the, our pieces would fly by the most perfect laws of math, right? right? So if you're attached to your body, you know, you won't like it. If you're interested in math, you'll say, hey, look at that, pieces flying like that. It's all right. perfect mathematics right so it depends on the level and you do what you can right and and then you know that they are all Buddhas who haven't found it out and that sort of helps you to go on to go on to yeah, do the sure. next day you'll always have to think you must never be like the one who goes like a teacher go into a class and saying what are the 30 gorillas doing in my class you must always go in and say what are the 30 Einsteins or Bohr's or Planck's or whatever doing uh, in my class, because then you have the basis to work from. You must always understand that they are really Buddhas who didn't find it out, and then you can go in there and say, hey kids, let's do something. You can go to where they are. Yeah, yeah, sure. I sure, mean, you sure. have to, somebody oh, can yeah. only take a step from where they're standing. Yeah, sure, sure, I mean, sure. if you think they're going to take a step no. from... Right, I mean, it's just yeah. not going to work. No, it's a waste of everybody's no, no, time. Of course not. So, would you say that, that the experience for you is for you personally, it, it inspires you and, and enhances your experience to go around and see, see the, the hunger and the love of all the, all the people coming to you? I, th I see more and more fantastic people, you know. I mean, I really see, maybe it's probably also, it's my mind also, you know. It, it works in the way that uh, harmful, really negative things are more or less very quickly recognized as being faulty programs and thrown out while positive things, you know, are seen as having ultimate value and are being stored and kept and so on. So, actually, in my own case, you know, I see it and I nearly only pick up the positive, but I know the other things also. Right, you know it's, it's just there. My, I right. know, it's just right. my mind will always... And also, for some reason, maybe because, you know, I'm very direct or I don't know why, or my karma or whatever, people always behave very well when I'm there. They misbehave when I'm not. Well, I heard you were a boxer and you, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you sure, intimidate sure. them too. So. Mm, I shake them up a bit. <laughs> right, I shake right. them up a bit. So you I've, heard, I've heard right? tell yeah. about that. That's true. That's true. <laughs>
That's true. No, I, 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 my experience has been is that, you know, if you're experiencing love and coming from love, I mean, mostly you'll draw love to you. Yes, you are. That's also true. That's true. And then it's always a question of going to the cause, not just the effects. Not only stay with the effects, cause, you know, that's the important thing. Uh, always look, you know, what's underneath it, you know, and if you can make people like really trust that they are beautiful inside, that they really are, that they really can be start, good people. Yeah, as a, as a start, yes, and yes, then yes, hopefully yes. open them yeah, yeah. to the yes, yes, yes. knowing and the experience yes, yes, yes. Of it. and showing them that you trust them a few times and stuff like that. Then they will grow. Then right. they will grow very nicely. Yeah, love feeds itself. Yes, yeah, sure. I mean people. Wa people want to love and feel love. That's yeah. That's and at the same time, they don't want to be sentimental, they don't right. want to be sloppy, they don't want to be over-emotional, right. right? So they have to sort of find a way that they can accept the love that they have and at the same time feel that they control the world and they're, and they're not sitting there with egg in their beards or looking right. sentimental or teary-eyed or something like I that. Think, I think we got about 15 seconds, so, well, you know, again, uh, I'm just blown away by Sarah and Oli and... I hope you had an incredible experience. Good night. God bless you. Thank you for watching. All the gods. All the gods.